Do you ever wonder how great leaders in the community make things happen? When they encounter new unexpected challenges like a pandemic, how do they continue to successfully make an impact? Welcome to That Sounds Terrific, the podcast that connects you with these amazing people. Get insights on what they do to meet their goals. Find out how you can help them in their mission and learn their methods so you can be more successful at what you do. Welcome to That Sounds Terrific with host Nick Koziel. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of That Sounds Terrific. I'm your host, Nick Koziel, and joining me today is Howard Woolley. He's a behavioral change coach at Howard Woolley Coaching. Thanks for being on the show, Howard. Thanks for having me, Nick. I'm excited to be here. Well, it's great to have you um, because we all have behaviors and we all want to change certain things about ourselves. And it's great to talk to an expert in that field uh, around behavioral change. So why don't you just talk a little bit about, um, you know, yourself, a little bit of your history and kind of how you came to be what you are right now. <laughs> okay, cool. Be happy to. Um, I initially uh, was a personal trainer uh, for almost two decades. And I, I ran into this issue where I had guys that would come in, men and women. Um, they would work with me for a couple months. They would lose 20, 30 pounds. And then they would kind of go back to you know their lives. And then six months, a year later, they would come back and they would add the 20, 30 pounds back on. Um, so it wasn't necessarily that I felt like a fraud. Um, I, I wasn't giving them a solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. um, I was giving them a quick fix. You know, they could lose the 20 or 30 pounds and then they would go back to whatever their lifestyle was that created the issue. Right. So eventually I got to the point where I started to do a little bit of research into the, the psychology of weight loss. What's the difference between people who lose 20 or 30 pounds and keep it off for the rest of their life and the difference between people that lose 20 or 30 pounds and then put it right back on. So that kind of led me to where I am now, which is, you know, like you said, a behavior change coach specializing in, in weight loss. And I kind of created a system that's composed of not just nutrition and exercise, you know, the, um, the traditional weight loss and diet and fitness industry has kind of been hijacked by people that that want reoccurring revenue yeah. you know frankly that's really what it comes down to they, they don't necessarily care whether or not you lose 20 pounds and keep it off what they want is they want you to keep coming back yeah. um you know what i do is more like a driving instructor um you know i help you lose the weight and i give you the tools so that you can keep it off so that when you're done working with me you, you don't need me anymore um, does that make sense? Yes, that makes a lot of sense. And 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 I like the, you know, um, the whole driving instructor example. I think that's great. You know, getting everybody ready for the road, right? <laughs> and mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need that instructor with you uh, after that. And that's great. Um, sort of that uh, <laughs> that American dream, right? To, to have that business that just people keep coming back. But in this case, you know, like you said, it, it's not really helping the person if they have to come back. So I admire what you do. I think that's great. Um, very wholesome, you know, to have a business where you get someone set and they're, you know, you let them fly, right? Teach a man to fish. Yep. So exactly very it. cool. That was actually going to be my, uh, my, my initial, you know, my flagship program is the health to wealth blueprint. You know, initially the first name I had was, was teach a man to fit. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. So we were talking off air about how I, some, I sometimes have nice, uh, nice titles for my episodes. And <laughs> that would be something that I would come up with. I like that. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. Um, so it sounds like it was a bit of a process, right? You said you did research and in kind of looking into, you know, different systems that you might be able to use to kind of keep the weight off and, and you know, have your clients kind of set for life. Is that true? Like, or did the business idea really come to you and you kind of like started it right away? Well, that's actually an interesting question. Um, initially, I, I had the idea. Like I said, I had, you know, teach a man to fit. So I kind of created this this outline and I had spent years probably um, kind of trying to refine it and come up with, you know, because there, there's really, let me kind of go back. You know, we were talking about sure. what I focus on and what I do. Um, you know, everybody kind of gets sidetracked with the diet and nutrition aspect of weight loss. Um, mm -hmm. But weight loss, especially if you've had a lot of up and down, uh, you know, yo-yo dieting and weight loss, or if you're, you know, really overweight in terms of, you know, you have to lose 50, 60, 70, 100 pounds. 
weight loss in that instance is much more psychologically based than it is, you know, eat this and do this. Um, there's a lot of beliefs and, and different behaviors and habits that, that come into play that, that are much more important than just, you know, you know, eating chicken and broccoli and, you know, going to the gym three or four days a week. So my program is really based on, you know, there is activity and movement. You know, there's, there's essentially five essential components. There's activity and movement, there's nutrition, there's mm -hmm. mindset and your beliefs, and then habits and beaters. So, you know, going back to when I started, you know, I was trying to create this on my own and, you know, trying to figure out how to create an online program, how to sell an online program. And there, there were so many moving pieces, um, you know, and I kept, you know, it's funny because I put up a post today about it. You know, I kept, you know, trying the same thing over and over again and bitching and moaning about the results I was getting. And then finally, I, I found a group out of, you know, they were based in, in London, um, the Institute of fitness and behavior change. And they essentially had the pieces in place. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so I hired an expert to teach me how to do what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I knew what I wanted to do and I knew what my personal touch was and, and, and my concept, I just needed somebody to teach me the whole framework behind delivering the system. Right. Right. Yeah. So every coach needs a coach or, you know, or teacher. And I think that that's uh, a great thing to live by. And I always get um, one of the questions that I ask, you know, when I have different types of coaches on the, um, on the show is, um, you know, do you have a coach and, and like, uh, do you still have a coach that you talk to about different things or um, are you all? Um, I have a couple coaches system? that I used to work with that, that I still speak to. Um, you know, right now I'm kind of refining my system and I think that I am going to be looking for a coach, uh, more just for, for me, um, mm -hmm. you know, more of a, of a, um, of a business coach, uh, is kind of the next phase of, of, you know, I look at it as investing in myself. Um, sure. you know, you know, there's people that are out there that, that can, you know, what does an expert do? An expert takes years and years of learning and application and condenses it into, you know, weeks or months and you pay them to have it condensed into weeks or months. So you don't sit there and, you know, bust your ass for, for six months or a year and end up mm -hmm. in the same place. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense completely. And you kind of touched on something I was going to lead into also is asking, you know, as as you develop the system and it's all remote and online, how do you take care of yourself? Because, you know, you're going to be sitting in front of a camera a little bit more. Right. And so having a coach kind of, kind of help you that on the, on the business side, for sure. Like, you know, keeping the business going, but are there tips and tricks that you kind of live by yourself that are part of your program that, that you, you make sure that you do each day? Um, in terms of, you know, the physical aspect or the business aspect. Uh, I would say let's start with the physical and then we'll go maybe into the business too, because I think both are important, but you know, how do you, how do you kind of keep yourself on track uh, as far as your health goes? Um, for me, uh, it's, it's because, I, because I've had, I've, I've had ups and downs throughout my life. Um, when I was younger, I was, you know, athletic, I was in sports, I swam, I played football. Um, I went off to the university of Maryland and that was, I had no idea what I wanted to do. You know, everybody used to, you got to go to college. That's what you got to do. Right. So, um, I went to the university of Maryland. I had a really good time. Um, I was back within a year. Uh, I felt like a complete and total failure. Like I let myself down, my family down, you know, I was going to community college. So I didn't do anything. I just got fat. I mean, I was just eating and drinking and partying and, and, you know, one day I woke up and um, I was eating a sandwich and my sister's boyfriend kind of walked in the house and he's like, dude, that's the fattest thing I've ever seen anybody do. <laughs> um, and it was like, a, but it, for me, it was, you know, a breaking point. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was like 225, 230 pounds and I'm only 5'8". So to be 225, 230 is, is, was not good. And I was mm -hmm. 20 years old. So I kind of got back into it. Um, I decided to join a gym. I lost the weight. And then, you know, fast forward, you know, 15 years or so, I, I was doing personal training and, and a good friend of mine had a startup with this little regulatory niche, niche in hospitals. So he's like, I need somebody to you know, work with me. So I started doing this, you know, thing with him and I was traveling all over the country, going to hospitals and doing this and, I, and at airports. 
Um, so I wasn't training anymore. And I, again, let myself go, but it was twofold. Mm-hmm. I let myself go because I wasn't happy with what I was doing. Um, and to compensate for not being happy for what I was doing, I was, you know, drinking, I was eating like crap. I was in hotels and airports. I was making excuses as why I couldn't work out. And I ended up being, you know, 200 plus pounds again. And, um, you know, the breaking point for me there was I blew my arm out because I wasn't doing anything. I tore mm-hmm. my bicep off my forearm and, you know, I had three kids and, you know, now I had to have the surgery. So I was completely incapable of doing anything. You know, I mm-hmm. remember, and, and this, this is it's still to this point, knock on wood, was the lowest point of my life. Mm-hmm. My wife had to give me a bath because after the surgery, I had one of those yeah. arm casts, like, you know, in the cartoons with the thing out. And my kids thought it was the funniest thing. That, that <laughs> of mommy's course they did. Of <laughs> but for me, it was just this humiliating low point that I had let myself get to. Um, so in terms of my physical self, you know, I'm like I get up every morning and it's the first thing I do um, before, you know, I, I get to work. I get up, I spend 15, 20 minutes, I meditate, I jump on my journal. Um and if I'm doing something new, personal development wise, I'll put it in there. And then right after that, I get right to the gym so that it's done. Mm-hmm. Because to be honest with you, you know, you have kids, you know, work comes up, things come up. You know, if I put it off till, you know, four o'clock, you know, he's home and it's all of a sudden we have to run here and get, you know, sneakers for basketball or somebody's got a practice yeah. that they didn't tell us about. And you get put on the back burner really fast. And that becomes a habit mm-hmm. and a behavior that, that, you don't recognize until all of a sudden you're on the back burner all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, t- I totally can relate with what you're saying. And, you know, sorry that you had to go through those things. But um, I think, you know, you wouldn't be, probably be where you are right now if you hadn't, right? Nope. So um, I think that those are important things. And something else that popped in my head while you were talking about, you know, the different phases of your life, go- going to college, and then, you know, coming back from college, those are the times like, when I think about some of the athletes that I worked with at, um, you know, college, when they stopped their sport, when they stopped their craft, it was a big change in their life. And the systems that were in place, the behaviors that they were used to doing, going to the gym with the team in the morning, going to practice, you know, in the afternoon and then doing gym again or something like that. That was a system that was in place for them. And as soon as they're out of that environment, you know, whether they, they leave college, graduate from college, get an injury, um, there's a new system that has to be put in place. And, and, and so a lot of times, and I know in my personal experience, that's where, you know, I gained the weight, right? Something outside of my normal routine changed. So that my normal routine was never going to be the same. Um, But I never really got back into the, to that groove. So then I start to gain weight. Right. So is that something that you kind of touch on with, with your behavioral change thing? Like, environmental changes work changes life changes things like that how to deal can you talk a little bit about that um yeah it's funny i had a call with a client yesterday and and we had this this very conversation because you know what you were talking about there with athletes that's not just a a behavior change and a habit change and structure change that's an identity change right yeah you're absolutely right right. They're, they're they're no longer an athlete right they're they're they were an athlete and that's what got them through college. And now they're just a regular person who's trying to, you know, move forward in, in their life and in the world. So they have to come to terms with a new identity. Um, and it's the same thing, you know, with people in my program um, is, you know, a lot of times, you know, the majority of the people I work with, you know, aren't doing anything for their health. So they have to start to change their identity to, to, look at themselves now as somebody who's doing something on a daily basis, regardless of how big or small it is towards their health. And as they, they shift, as you lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds, you have to then adjust to a new identity because you're no longer, you know, Jim Smith, that was 50 pounds overweight. You're Jim Smith that feels great and is doing better. And everybody's giving you compliments and it's a different, it's, it's, it's a whole different psychological beast for them. Right. You know, some people are even, uncomfortable with that aspect of it that's actually harder for them than it was to be where they were when they started yeah yeah you're absolutely right um and transitioning into a new role is is, you know like you said psychologically an impact and and if you don't kind of address it 
you kind of get into a different kind of system or even a rut, right? So, um, well, you talked a little bit about like, you know, what your system does and things like that. Can you, can you give us a, you know, a broad overview of like how you approach a, a new client and, and what, you know, a little bit about your system without giving away all your trade secrets? Essentially, my flagship program is called the Health to Wealth Blueprint. Um, it's a 12 week program. And what I do is we focus on the, the five areas that we spoke about earlier, activity and movement, nutrition, mindset, beliefs, habits, and behaviors. And, you know, not that I am a doctor, but just like a doctor, I kind of have to diagnose what's going on. Um, it's, it's not always just, you know, eat this and do this and you're going to lose weight. We have to figure out, you know, my goal is to figure out how you got into the situation you were in in the first place and then try to change those beliefs, those patterns, those, those behaviors so that you understand them, you're aware of them and you know how to alter them when they come back up. Um, what we do is, is we really, really start out simply, like I said, you know, I, I have to diagnose it. Um, so we take the first couple of weeks, we figure out what's going on. Um, in the same time, we're, we're making two to three habit shifts each week that are going to move you towards your goal of weight loss. So, you know, it could really simply be, you're going to eat a healthier breakfast this week. You're going to drink some more water and you're going to walk, you know, three or four times a week for 20 minutes. If you haven't done anything, if you're kind of active, then we adjust it accordingly. But, you know, the, the key is, is individualizing it to everybody's lifestyle. Um, because I, I live right by New York and there's guys that are on the ferry at 530 in the morning. So they can't get up and make breakfast and get to the gym and work out in the morning. So, so what they're going to have to do is going to be a lot different than somebody like me where, you know, I, I have the luxury of getting up and, and working out in the morning and, and being able to make a breakfast because I, I work from home and, mm -hmm. you know, I have a much, much different lifestyle. So essentially we, we, we work together to make, you know, better and more positive, manageable choices in, in your diet. Uh, we figure out an exercise program that works for you in your schedule. You know, we create a balanced lifestyle really is, is what we're looking for. And we identify the small steps, behaviors and habits that you can do to move forward. And outside of that, when you get into the mindset, you know, I ask hard questions, you know, and I listen to the answers to those hard questions. And that's really what's gonna help people create and be able to sustain a lifestyle of, of, you know, health and wellness. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, hard questions. It, it's not something that you can quickly change overnight and you can't assess it overnight. So I think, you know, our listeners and your potential clients, right. Should, should understand that change is hard. We are, we all know that, but it's not necessarily hard because of the change, but making the different steps that you need to do to kind of keep that consistency in, in your lifestyle. Um, yeah. So it makes a lot of sense that it wouldn't be like, you know, one session up oh, here's, here's the diet, here's the plan. Cause you might not know the underlying issue, right? Uh, there's a certain amount of rapport and trust that have to be developed between you and your, your client. And, um, and, and it, they may think it's something and then you realize and uncover it's actually, this is what's causing your, your weight gain. It's not so much that, right. So that's a very, you know, cool system. Um, I like it. And uh, what kind of, um, I know you said you work primarily with, with men, right? But like, what kind of, what's your like perfect client, I guess? Um, you know, my ideal client is, you know, men over 40 um, who are very successful in, in most areas of their life, except for their, their health and their fitness. Um, you know, the, the majority of guys I have are, are either, corporate jobs, you know, um, I mean, the, pretty much they, they run the gamut, but, but the, the main consistent theme is, is that they were pretty active most of their life and they were, they were pretty healthy. And, and then once they hit 40 and kind of in that forties, fifties area, um, you know, it wasn't so easy to get back to where they were, you know, right. cause I mean, you know, you're around the same age I am when you were in your twenties, you know, you could gain 10, 15 pounds and you could knock it off in two or three weeks. Yeah. Um, when you were in your thirties, you can gain 10, 15 pounds and, and maybe it would take you, you know, a month or two to lose it, but you could still lose it. Once you get to 40, 45, 50, your body doesn't respond the same way. Right. Um, and you can't go back to doing the same things that you did when you were 20, you could just go out and start running, um, right. you know, 
when you're 50, if you haven't done anything in 10 years and you go out and start running, you, you're going to have a whole lot <laughs> of other problems. And right. you know, the least of which is, you know, 20 pounds you want to lose. Um, so the point being is that they have systems in place for success in their life, for success at home, for success in their business, for success in their career. They just, for some reason or another, have, have lost focus of their, their health and their fitness. Yeah. No, I, I, I get what you're saying completely. And I was thinking about the the old adage, like, you know, old habits die hard, right? Um, so if, and, and I'm, I'm sensing that theme also, because um, it, it, it happened, you know, with me, with every job change, with everything, they get, all these people that you're working with have very high, you know, um, responsibility in their life, right? Um, so it used to be like in, in, in when they were younger, they were able to lose the weight really quickly and whatnot. But, but even that cycle, is kind of interesting, right? So at 20, we gained a couple pounds because of this change. And then at 30 something, we came, get, you know, we lost it, but we, we gained some more weight. And now we lost it. So there's that cycle again, that you were talking about earlier in the program that, you know, you need to develop a mindset. You need to develop a system that like keeps the weight off rather than kind of falling into that cycle. Uh, so I think that's a really terrific thing that you do for people, um, you know, kind of get their life on track on all cylinders, right? Not just in some areas. So, um, and I do love the approach, getting to know them and really understand um, what all the, all the things, all the factors, right? That are contributing to, you know, their health, um, health problems or their weight problems or just in general, right? So I wanted to ask you also, like, being online and remote with with this, um, are you finding that that's a, a great advantage? Um, you know, was it better when you were like a personal trainer in person? Do you miss parts of that? Like, what are some of the, you know, the great aspects about being remote? That's a really good question. Um, there's the obvious aspects of, you know, being remote, working from home, you know, essentially kind of creating my own schedule, uh, my own timeline. Um, but in terms of, of, productivity and, and working with clients. Um, when I was a personal trainer, um, I, it, 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 I mean, I guess I can really can't compare the two. It's, it's sure. you know, apples and oranges. But I feel that um, working remotely um, allows people to open up more. It, mm. it lets people feel a little bit safer than when you're in person with someone. Um, if that makes sense, I, mm -hmm. I feel that, you know, especially men, um, we, we all have been kind of culturally programmed to be these, you know, tough, don't show any emotion, you know, men don't cry, men don't have feelings, you know, and, and you know, um, whether it's right or wrong, um, uh, I'm not here to judge that, but I know for me, it was wrong. And I know that for me, initially, when I started talking about things that I felt like my emotions and my feelings, um, it, it was so awkward to me that to have to do it in front of somebody would have made it even more awkward to be physically present with somebody. So right. I feel that it, it allows my clients to to relax a little bit more, um, you know, because it's not like they're talking to, you know, like a friend or their wife where they're going to see in four hours and they just admitted something, you know, that, that was, you know, they had been fighting mm -hmm. for, for years and years and years, you know, um, and I feel that, that it outside of it, whether it's in person or, or remotely, that the most important aspect of it is creating a safe space where mm -hmm. people feel they can share those things. Um, you know, sometimes it means I have to share something. Um, you know, it's personal with me to kind of get the ball rolling, but, you know, I, I think it allows me to, to be more open and honest with people. And it gives people a, a, a little bit more like a layer of, uh, of comfortability in being open and honest with me, you know, because if, you know, there was a guy told me once bullshit in bullshit out. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, so if, if you give me a line of shit, you know, then that's what you're going to get in terms of your results. Um, yeah. you know, you have to be open and honest and be willing to be open and honest with it. Otherwise you're, you're not going to be able to fix the problem. Right. No. And, you know, 
the moment that we met, uh, you know, through our first connection, you, you put me at ease and I felt like, you know, I could instantly trust you. And you had some genuine things that you shared And you know, it, I think you're really good at what you, what you do and really get good at getting people to open up. And, you know, what I also liked about, you know, us talking was that you, you didn't let me make excuses and you didn't let me get away with, you know, just uh, answering. I don't know. You know, you kind of dug in. And I think that that uh, is very important. And, you know, obviously you're a professional and you know what you're doing and, and, and whatnot. But I, I just want to make sure that my listeners understand that you really do take the time and you really do care about like what the people are are trying to get across and getting at the root of the of the issue or the problem or, you know, whatever it is. So, um, you know, I just wanted to make sure you knew that I really felt that way uh, when we were talking. I'm like, this, this guy's genuine. So it's cool. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Well, um, and you know, uh, I wanted to ask one other thing. So what are, what are, um, you know, what challenges have you had to overcome, um, you know, personally with this transition and like if anybody that might be thinking about doing something similar, what are some, maybe one or two things that you would say, if you were to go back and do it over again, I wish I had done it this way, right? As far as starting your business and, and, and doing, like it could be business in general, maybe not coaching, but um, any kind of feedback about solopreneuring? Oh, that's a good question. Jeez. Um, Sorry, I told you there's no stumpers except for one. And I feel like I just gave you one. <laughs> there's a stumper. There's just so much. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we could do a whole another podcast on that alone. Um, true, true. The first thing I would say um, is listen to your gut, listen mm -hmm. to your instinct. Um, you know, we all have like a a logical mind that wants to protect us and talks us out of doing those things. But if you didn't listen to your gut and didn't listen to your instinct, what good things would you have in your life? Would you have gone up to your wife or your husband and introduced yourself? Would you have asked them to marry right. you, right? Did you need to know they were going to say yes before you did that? Would you have decided to have kids, right? Would you yeah. have said, oh, you know what? The economy is not great. We only have $10,000 in the savings account. <laughs> Our house is only one and a half bedrooms. So we can't have a kid right now. No, you, you, would, you, you make those decisions based off of of your instinct of what the universe, God, whatever you want to call it is telling you. Um, so solopreneuring, first of all, is, is use your gut instinct. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if you're thinking about it, then try to find a way to do it. Um, number two is hire a coach, hire somebody who's done it, you mm -hmm. know, somebody who's done what you're trying to do. Um, because that's going to be the fastest way and it's going to eliminate, months and months and years and years of just you know endless work where you spend i mean i i'm sure you probably had or I, I would spend weeks doing something and mm -hmm. it would be something that i later on would just take and throw out and i would waste right. weeks and weeks and weeks it's nothing you know something that you think you're going to do um you know and the other thing is is you know confidence you know confidence is a skill that you build up through action it is not something that you have it is not something you get it is not something you can buy at the store um, you know, you could have more money in your bank account and, and, you know, you want to leave your job and start something else. You're not going to be any more confident in, in starting something else. You, know, you might be confident that you can pay your bills for another month or two, but you're not going to be confident in doing it. Confidence comes up with, with taking action towards whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, and. The, you know, I would say it's really listen to your gut and just go for it. And, and that's a hard thing because we're so programmed, you know, culturally and school wise. And, you know, you know, you, you do this, you go to work, you, you know, you work nine to five and you get your job and you retire and, 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 you know, yeah, some people are good like that. I wasn't, you know, I was not a nine to five guy. I was, you know, I was a good employee. I worked hard. You know, yeah. the guy I worked with, you know, when I was doing personal training, I mean, he was awesome. He was, he was a mentor to my, I learned more with him and in, in, in the years I worked with him than I could have put together in all the different courses, but working for somebody else was not where I wanted to be. And I knew that, you know, and yeah. it took, you know, a, a long time for me to build up the, the courage to do it. But right. it was funny because once I did, you know, I was worried about what my wife would say, you know, we had three kids and I'm like, I'm going to start my own business. And I remember I came home from the studio and, uh, 
my wife sitting on the couch and I'm like, listen, there's something I want to tell you. She's like, yeah. Like she's looking at me like, you know, we're going to get divorced. Like she has like this <laughs> look on like her face. Like she's terrified. Yeah. And I'm like, I think I'm going to quit my job and start my own business. And she was like, okay. And then just like went back to reading a book. Like I thought it was going to be like, I, I created in my mind what I, I thought it, it was going to be. I built it up. I built up this whole creation through this, this, logical human thinking that we do instead of just listening to my gut which was telling me you know years before you know do this on your own you can do this on your own you know you'll find a way um but yeah just you know, as 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 the french sneaker manufacturer nikkei says just do it yeah <laughs> Awesome. I asked, yeah, I asked that question and, 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 you know, I was expecting one thing and, and you gave three great things and an inspirational story. Um, I was literally just talking to a friend that is kind of going and starting off on this journey and, and becoming a consultant. Um, and I said, you know, she was worried that it wasn't the right point in her life. And I was trying to convince her. I said, this is the perfect point. Your kids are off and out of the house. Like you're, 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 you're great for what you're doing. You have a wonderful knowledge base and you just got to take that leap. Um, and I should just have her talk to you because <laughs> that was very inspirational. I, I, I think that that's awesome. And, you know, congratulations on, on taking that leap. And, and we often do build up things that, you know, for our significant others or even just our family, that what are they going to say? And we build it up in their mind and our minds and it actually makes it a hundred million times harder. And that tension she sensed in the room was probably all that you built up, you it's know, she me. was feeling right. So that was my tension had nothing to do with her. Sure. You know, she, she's like, I knew you wanted to do that. She's like, I don't know what took you so long. You know, it was, <laughs> it was simple. Yeah. You know, but that's, I mean, that's the point. Like you said, she, you know, your friend was talking about, you know, is it the right time? We use perfect to procrastinate. Yeah. Right. There is, there is zero. There's nothing that's perfect. Nothing. It's, it's a non-existent concept, right? Mm -hmm. You can't have a perfect anything. There's no perfect square. There's no perfect level. There's no true, you know, like there's no perfect human. There's no, there's nothing is perfect. It cannot be perfect. Right. So if yeah. we live in an imperfect world, if you're waiting for the perfect time to start to lose weight or the perfect time to start a new job or a perfect time to start a career or pick up a hobby or whatever it is, you're going to be waiting forever. Yeah. There is no perfect yeah. time. Yeah. Well, Howard, I mean, I love what, what you're doing. Uh, I've said that a couple of times in this episode. I think that um, you're a great asset to any of your clients and potential clients. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that, that you definitely needed to share uh, about what you're doing or, any awesome tips like that you've already given us a bunch and I, I almost don't want to let you go. You're right. We could have a whole other podcast episode about, uh, you know, your wisdom. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in reality, it's, it's all the same thing, right? What, what I do with people in regards to their health is the same thing we just talked about mm -hmm. in, you know, starting a career or a new job or a new business, you know, everybody has the tools already. You utilize sure. them. You just haven't asked yourself the right questions and, and gotten the answers that you need for, for your health, mm -hmm. right? Because we all have the answers, right? You know, you know what to do. I know what to do. It's just a matter of, of wading through, you know, their beliefs, right? To, I used to think of them when I was younger as excuses, right? Like I don't have time or, you know, I, I have, you know, I have low testosterone or I have bad knees, right? Those, when I was younger, those were excuses that people were making, but they're actually beliefs, you know? Mm -hmm. So you have to go, why do you believe that? You know, is right. that true, right? There's people that are busier than you that are in better shape than you. So obviously time is not an issue. Right. You know, you have bad knees. OK, well, there's guys that, that have no knees mm -hmm. that are in good shape and they're not overweight. So what's your, you know, excuse, excuse. now? Right. So, you see, yeah. so so it's about breaking down those beliefs, you know, and I, I think that's that's the biggest part of success, whether it's weight loss, whether it's business, whether it's you know starting your own career, whether it's learning how to play the guitar. It doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's overcoming those those limiting beliefs being able to break them down and, and then come up with a plan you yep. know to move forward yeah you can be your biggest obstacle and often you are your biggest obstacle right so 
Well, Howard, I, I really appreciate you being on the show. I urge my my followers and our listeners and watchers here to to connect with you. Um, we'll have all of your connection, social media, email, and stuff in the show notes. Uh, but thank you so much for being on. That sounds terrific, Howard. Hey, man, thank you for having me. I had a great time. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us in another episode of That Sounds Terrific. Don't forget to check out the show notes and our website at thatsoundsterrific.com to find the contact information and the best ways to volunteer with the organizations that we feature. If you know someone that is doing terrific things and think they should be featured in a future episode, be sure to email us their name, contact info, and short description of what they're doing at thatsoundsterrific at gmail.com. If you like our show, give us a five-star rating and give us some social media love by liking our facebook page that sounds terrific follow us on twitter at sounds terrific too and instagram at sounds terrific we love hearing your feedback on how to make our show sound even more terrific till next time